Record. Hi, I'm Tom Way from Gun Dog Trainer. In our 15 minute trainer series, we take a dog from start to finish using 15 minute segments to help you train your dog. More often than not, most of our training revolves around, as it say, states, gun dogs. But today we're going to show you the same things that we use and apply with gun dogs and hunting dogs work for a, a, a regular, I guess, pet here besides. Today we're going to take out six month Finnegan. He is an Irish wolfhound. Um, to let you guys see that just because he's not a hunting dog doesn't mean that we can't implement and apply the same things we're doing. Uh, we put the electronic collar on him. We're going to go about this teaching the hear command to start with and work on heel and a few other things. We've been working him for a few days so he's at least been collar conditioned to this but the problem that he has is that as a young dog he feels you know in his mind that he can do what he wants when he wants. So we're going to start off and show you with, when you get a dog that's a hundred pounds come on buddy, Finnegan here, here, Finn here, 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 good boy. And when you get a dog that's 100 pounds, like Finn is, at six months old, that you also have to have control. So by having the collar on him, it's just like an electronic leash, and we're working the dog the same way we would as if, you know, this dog had, had used uh, pinch collars and choke chains, and his owner had done it without a lot of success. By using the electronics, it allows us to take this dog and teach him that he's turning the pressure off. A dog of this magnitude and size which is going to probably put another 70 or 80 pounds on, you know, a 200 pound dog is a lot to handle. So we're going to walk through this process with Finnegan here and using the collar and the check cord to, to get him to associate the, the point of pressure and the pressure we're working at. We start off on a low level, which is one. We let him move around, we give him the pressure and we give him the command. Here, stimulate, good boy. Here, we open ourselves up, heel, sit. Make him come on in and heal and sit. Now you notice how I open myself up with that. I'm teaching the dog to follow my hand into where I want him. He should sit and stay here until I release him verbally. Okay. I use okay as a means to release him. Here again we walk him around. Let him move around a little. Now just because he's a big dog doesn't mean he's a high energy dog. But there's a lot of power behind this dog so we want to make sure we have control at all times. We let him get away again. Here, stimulate, good boy. Heel, open ourselves up, heel, right here, here. We step into him where we want, we bring him to where we want him to be, good boy. He comes in, he sits, and he's where he should be, under control, good boy. Okay, I release him, he goes on his way. Now we have the cord on him, and we're gonna take the cord off in a minute because we had worked this dog for a few days. Now being he's only a puppy, he looks like a big dog, but he's six months old and he's still a puppy. We can only take that 15 minute series and utilize that because mentally he can't comprehend much more than that. We're gonna let him walk around here. Come on, Finn. Good boy. Notice I'm not calling him to heal or walk with me. I'm just trying to get him to stay away so I can utilize it. Give him the command here, stimulate, good boy. Praise, open yourself up, heel. Right here, here, good boy, good boy. Pet him, praise him, it's, he has not been released so he should stay here. Sit is a stay command as well as a, a sit command. Once I gave him a sit command, he should stay here until I release him. Okay, good boy. By using a simple term like okay, the dog learns that then he is allowed to move and go on his way. Again, we let him move around. He starts to get where he follows me just because he wants to turn off the pressure or make the pressure not happen. But notice I'm not giving him any commands. I'm allowing the dog to sit and move with me, but I want him to get the freedom to say, okay, I have to stay around and be under control, but I don't necessarily have to be in his pocket. So we're letting them kind of move freely. If you're going to take a dog to a dog park or out in public, just a regular pet, you still have to have the same parameters and same control that you'd have with any working or hunting dog. And that's why we're showing you here today that all these same techniques apply to just pets, companions, and all those things accordingly. Now we're going to let him move away again. 
and we're going to utilize the, the collar and the, for the command. Here he moves away. Here. Here. Stimulate. Good boy. Good dog. Here. Here. Never moving towards him. I'm going to move away. Here. Good boy. Heel. Right here. Right here. Good dog. Good boy. Okay. Good dog. Now notice. I can utilize that collar, not have to change my, my, my dialect, not have to change how I'm talking to him, but letting him turn off the pressure himself allows the dog to make the decision what he wants to do. And in this case, he wanted to sit there, there was a distraction. It allowed me to give him the pressure and make him make the decision to come to me. Good boy. Now, if you notice also the size area we're using to do this, everybody complains and says, well, I don't have a lot of room to do it. This is a training field set up for training, but you could use any baseball field, soccer field, the backyard to utilize, you know, and, and understand and accomplish these small goals. But a small goal to me is a big goal to you because without that control, you don't have anything when you're out. Here we go again. Here. Good boy. Moving away from the dog. Heel. Right here. Good boy. Right here. 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 Notice I move him to where I want him. Is it okay where he sat? Is that heel kind of off kilter? Sure. But that's not acceptable to me. By allowing the little things to happen and the little things, you know, the dog get away with the little things, it allows him to make a decision what he wants to do, not what we want to do. Keep it simple. Keep it the same. Keep the dog where you want him, how you want him every time. We're going to do one more, and then we're going to take the lead off and do a couple that way. Okay. Good boy. All right. <laughs> now he knows what's going on here, and he kind of has an idea of, you know, he doesn't want to get the pressure, so he's hanging around with me to eliminate that. So I'm going to just make it not so artificial and kind of move around. So he has to move away from me. Here, stimulate. Good boy. Moving away. Heel. Sit. Good boy. Don't be afraid to praise him when he does it right. Good boy. Now we're going to take the cord off him. Okay. Now he's got freedom. And now he doesn't feel the drag of the cord. He doesn't feel the cord holding him in his mind, but he knows that he doesn't want to make the mistakes. So we let him move around a little. Finnegan, here. Good boy. Stimulate him, give him the command. Here he comes. Heel. Sit. Sit. Good boy. He wants to lay down. That's not a sit. Pick him up. Laziness allows him to lay down. We gave him a sit command, he's got to sit. Okay, good boy. Come on, you. Okay. We let him move around. Okay, come on. <coughs> now notice I'm not talking the dog to the dog while I'm doing this. I don't want him to always think I'm having contact with him. I'm talking, but I'm not directing it towards him. I'm trying to get him to have his freedom and do what he wants so we can work on you know, what we've been working on with the collar. I can pet him and acknowledge him, but I'm not going to give him a command until I feel as though I want to. And this is what typically happens. I call it they get clingy. They get where they want to get close to you. They want to cling by you because he doesn't know that it's me giving him the, the, the pressure, but he knows it's associated with what we're working on. So the easiest way to eliminate it is hang out so you never get yourself out away from him. Now if you notice, nothing's changed as far as this dog's demeanor from start to finish. Because in his mind, he's making that decision. He's getting the pressure, he's turning it on, he's turning it off according to what, you know, the commands were given him. Now notice he's staying with me. Now this is, mind you, is a six-month-old dog that's maybe had a collar on him twice. We've worked through some of this stuff, 
But you can see when done correctly and taken in those 15 minute small spurts that the dog can actually comprehend what you want to do. Now here's my opportunity. Here, stimulate, good boy. Open myself up, heel, give him a direction to go. There we go, good boy. He heals, he comes in and sits. Good dog, good boy. I'm Tom Waite from Gun Dog Trainer. And this is your 15 minute trainer for the common house dog on collar conditioning and working on and off lead. Thank you guys and look forward to our videos here in the near future of the other things we're going to be working on.